Um, we will go ahead and get started. We may have some other people that come while we are here. Um, so we have a, a very informal agenda for this uh, meet and greet. Um, we will allow, what we'll do is we'll have um, each of our programs just share a little bit about what they're offering, uh, what they do, who those volunteers are. And then we have some additional volunteers here from the Fort Collins International Center uh, who just love getting to know you all and meeting you and hanging out with you at our different events. Um, so first of all, I should say welcome. Thank you for joining us wherever you're joining us from. Uh, the Fort Collins International Center is an all volunteer organization that works with our office. Um, they are a, a group that um, has existed for over 70 years. Someone might have to correct me on my time. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, in a different capacity, I think officially maybe for about 50 years or so, but has existed for a, a very long time. And their whole reason for existing is to support uh, our international population in various ways through the programs they provide, through services, through different kinds of help that they offer. And the most important thing is they love working with you all and getting to know you and helping you. And they're able to provide additional things that our office is not able to provide. Um, they are all volunteers, like I said, so they do this just because they want to, because they enjoy uh, meeting you all, learning from you, uh, sharing their culture. Um, so it is a really incredible organization. And uh, I've worked at a number of different institutions in the US and I will tell you, this is incredibly unique. Very few of these exist. Uh, in anywhere else in the country and even fewer of them are as well organized and as dedicated as our volunteers here. So if you see them around in person, um, say hi to them. They're super friendly and they would love to get to know you. Uh, you will be seeing them around in, in different places. Um, Nancy, I would love for you to say anything that I haven't said about FCIC. Um, and maybe also take this opportunity to just introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy Sturdivant, and um, I've been volunteering with this organization since 1993. After I lived in Australia, and people were friendly to me, and I came back and said, I want to be friendly to international visitors. So I found out about Fort Collins International Center and I've been a volunteer ever since. Some of you, I helped find housing. Um, I worked for just a short time at the international office, but now I've retired um, again from, for the third time from my various jobs. And um, I'm back in the community as a volunteer. So we're really excited to have you those of you who can be physically present on campus this fall, but those that are virtual too, we are here to help you and get to know you and we welcome you all. I can't hear You're muted. Thank you. <laughs> you would think after all this time here that I would, uh, you know, in the Zoom space, I'd be able to get past doing that, but it still happens. Um, so we will go ahead and get started with some of our programs, um, starting with our outdoor programs. I think a lot of you are probably super excited about that. So uh, I will uh, have both of the volunteers that run that program introduce themselves. I will let both, uh, I'll let them decide how and you know, who talks about what, but Steve Fletcher and Mark Oberschmidt, I'm trying to spotlight both of you for the group. Um, but if you would like to introduce yourselves and share about outdoor programs. Steve, I'll let you go first. Hi, so I'm, um, I'm Steve Fletcher. I'm a research scientist here at CSU. I came here as an international postdoc 17 years ago, and I'm still here. Uh, so I help do the outdoor programs with Mark. We've been doing this now together for about coming up. I think it's coming up in 10 years now, nearly. At least. Yeah. <laughs> 
and we just had our first planning meeting in over a year two weeks ago to schedule up to christmas this year's outdoors events so your turn mark hi guys I'm, uh, my name is mark Oberschmidt. um i'm um i work with steve on the outdoor programs and like you said we we try to find stuff um and do stuff on a monthly basis uh, snow rain sunshine uh we, we get out there uh, we want, to, we want to introduce you to the beauty that is Colorado and Wyoming. Uh, so we, we have trips every month. We arrange transportation uh, through the CSU motor pool. So we'll have a van to get people from the meeting place to the hiking or whatever location and then back. Uh, but because of the current conditions, we'll have to work with the C underneath the CSU guidelines as the van capacity. Uh, but we have a lot of fun. We get to see a lot of really cool places. Uh, show you a little bit of all that is uh, Colorado because everybody comes to Colorado and thinks mountains, but we have prairies and we have deserts and we have a little bit of everything here in Colorado. And we hope you get to see it with us. Now, it looks like somebody posted our schedule up on the, in the chat. Yes. Those are the locations that we're going to um, starting in September. Them are yeah. in a relatively close distance to um, Fort Collins. Generally, our drives are under two hours to get to the location where we're going to hike or snowshoe or whatever. So, I posted uh, in the chat, I posted the uh, direct link for the outdoor programs page. It needs to be updated, which is the reason I posted the schedule. Right now, it says our programs, that program. Uh, is canceled until further notice, but um, by this weekend, those uh, the list of those hikes and snowshoeing trip will be posted on the website as well as a sign up will be available on that website that I posted for that trip coming September 11th. Um, so that's why I wanted to let people know that that those are coming. That's also the direct link to the outdoor programs page, which will be updated soon. Um, so thank you, Mark and Steve. Um, I think next we will talk about our conversational English classes. And I'm going to find Lou and spotlight you so that you can take over and share about our conversational English classes. Well, welcome everyone. I just finished an hour and a half Zoom uh, conversation English class. Um, we have been meeting since the pandemic uh, twice a week um, on Zoom, and you can find our, our link to that, or there, there we go, there's a link to that. Um, we do not know how long we will be at Zoom. Uh, we will take in everything week by week um, through, through August, we will still be doing Zoom. So any, we had a young lady from, um, um, Brazil come today for the very first time. And she said, oh, I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't know enough English. And she was beautiful. So we take people at all different levels, but she found out that another person in the class, another young lady lives very close to her at, in, at CSU. And so they are going to get to know each other. So it's another advantage. You have conversation with uh, a couple of different teachers and we divide you in a group. So we do a whole group thing. But you also get to know each other. And that's another very positive. Sometimes it, you, it, you need to get to know other people that are in the same situation you are. You might be a spouse. Not everybody is a student. They might be a spouse and somebody who needs some activity. So we do um, Mondays or Thursdays from 930 to 11. And you are all welcome. Great. Thank you, Lou. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as Lou said, we put the direct link for the conversational English classes in that chat. Uh, next up, uh, we'll have Erin share information about our Global Ambassador Student Program. Hi, everyone. Um, oh, thank you, Bronwyn. <laughs> I was going to also post in the chat um, the email address for Global Ambassadors. Can you post that as well, Bronwyn? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so 
Global Ambassador Student Program is a really long name. Um, so we usually just call it GASP. Um, my name is Erin, by the way. I'm one of the International Student and Scholar Advisors um, in the ISSS office. So you might also meet with me um, if you have immigration questions during open advising or if you come into the office. Um, but I'm also an advisor for GASP. Um, and GASP is primarily for students and scholars who are attending CSU, um, who have some kind of international background, whether you were born in another country, raised in another country, multiple, have lived in multiple countries, um, that's fine. Basically, if you just have a culture or a heritage that you would like to share um, with the greater Fort Collins community, then you're welcome to join. Um, we've been virtual, of course, during the pandemic. So we'll see this semester if we're able to do some in-person presentations, but it might be some combination of in-person or virtual presentations that you're doing um, and just sharing your culture with, um, oftentimes it's K through 12 schools in Fort Collins, um, but sometimes we get requests from like retirement communities. Um, so the audiences will vary, um, but just people in Fort Collins who are eager to learn more um, about other cultures. And um, if you're interested in joining, I think, Bronwyn put uh, the email address that you can email, um, or you can also um, fill out a form on the FCIC website to sign up as a speaker. And we'll contact you when there's opportunities. Great, thank you, Erin. Um, next, I believe we will be talking about international friends. So we have Vicki Traxler. Um, I'm just gonna find you on my screen here and spotlight you for everyone. Uh, Vicki, go ahead. I'll be putting the link in for international friends in the chat. Okay, great, thanks. So uh, I'm Vicki Traxler and Jackie Picard and myself uh, work with the International Friends Program. Um, that program uh, ranges for you to be friends with an American family or a community member from Fort Collins. We keep a list of yes. people in the community that want to get to know international student and students and scholars. And then we try to match you with someone from that list based on your shared interests. Um, so if you like hiking or cooking or watching movies or something like that, we would match you with someone with that interest from the Fort Collins community. Uh, we find that that's a good way for students to get to know the area better and to share cultures and lifestyles. And we find that everyone in the Fort Collins community benefits from their acquaintance with you. Um, we also note that students and scholars can uh, benefit from the expertise of local community members if there's something they need or can't find something, a community member can help them find that. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions about the program, but we can talk about those later if that works for you, Bronwyn. Um, yeah. But this past year, we've had about 30 students and scholars matched with 30 different uh, community members. And um, I think everyone's having a good time with this program. Thank you, Vicki. And yes, we will have an opportunity at the end to kind of go over questions that people may have or if they want to know more about a specific program. Um, next up, we will have Mark Oberschmidt again, talking about the um, International Night at the Library. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, so as you can see, International Night at the Library involves international something at the library. And what it is, is a people who either traveled, lived, or are from somewhere else in the world on occasion, we've had a presentation about the United States, but it's twice a month. It occurs right now, it's occurring. We're going back to in-person presentations starting in September. We went through the pandemic doing all Zoom presentations. 
Um, but you would, if you were interested in doing this and presenting about your country and educating the Fort Collins community about the culture, the music, the food, anything you would like to talk about your particular country, I'd be interested in talking to you. Um, it's every month, twice a month, except for November and December, because we have the holidays. Uh, we've presented just a little over half the world at this point in time. And I say this point in time, my records date back to 1999. The program actually started in the late 70s, early 80s. I just don't have any, record, any records that go back that far. Uh, it's a great great uh, program for sharing information on, you know, that we don't may not have the opportunity to, uh, to learn about on our own. The audiences come in and they have questions ranging from 20 to 30 people in the crowd at most times. Average age is 40 to 70. Um, always people interested in something international. So if you'd like this, if you like to talk in front of people, uh, and you want to share your country, your culture, uh, please get a hold of me. Looks like uh, Bowman put the website for the library in that link for the email that will eventually get to me, and then I'll be in touch. Um, I'm trying to get Pakistan lined up for September, but then I'm looking to book October, November, December, and beyond. So with that, I'll give it back to Bowman. Great, thank you, Mark. Uh, next up, we have Alex, who will be talking about the International Women's Club. Give me just a second, and there you go, Alex. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fort Collins, or soon to be in Fort Collins or abroad. Um, I also dropped in the chat just some things that um, Women's Club has done and is shifting to do. So we've been virtual in the last year, and that included just sharing about um, things that happen in our home country, sharing about job opportunities, as well as just talking about each other's weeks. Um, we recently started a book club, and so the latest information for our book club is in the chat. So the next meeting for that book club is going to be on August um, 28th. So if you would want to join us for that, the book dial is there as well. Those will continue to be virtual. Um, but we're shifting to back to in-person events for Women's Club at the end of August. Typically, those were hosted at a place that had a kitchen. So sometimes we would have them come teach us how to cook something from a different country. We did crafts, such as painting, um, different things, as well as um, we had food art from Thailand before. So it's kind of a time for women to just get together, share your culture, um, share what you're passionate about, and make connections with one another. Great. Thank you, Alex. Um, so in the chat is the link to the International Women's Club, um, which I think, I'm not sure, Alex, if you said it is for women only uh, and kids, obviously, but the book club actually is not for women only, as is what Adina said. So anyone would be welcome to join that book club if they're interested. Um, so thank you for sharing. Uh, next up, I believe uh, Marge is going to talk about other assistance that, uh, F or, yeah, that FCIC can offer. Um, let me spotlight you. And... Uh, Marge, you should be, oh, yeah, you should be good to go. Hello, everyone. Um, well, as you heard, we have lots of people and programs to help everyone. And I pretty much am the catch-all for other ways to help you. Uh, one of the major things we have is a lending closet. It's actually not a lending closet. We just give it to you. Uh, so. We have baby items, kids' toys, household goods, um, pretty much anything you might want or need to help you get settled. And um, hopefully you can just um, see them. This, in fact, if you're on, if you're in Fort Collins right now, there's gonna be a big giveaway this Saturday. Uh, Nancy can explain uh, that a little bit more. But um, at my house, we also have quite a bit of it in my basement. And 
Also, if you just have some kind of problem that you need help figuring out, I can help steer you in the right direction or usually find maybe a quick fix. So just know that we have a wealth of knowledge amongst us and um, the volunteers. And as you've been told, this has been going on for about 50 years. So don't feel shy about asking for help because we always have someone who can figure out what we can do to help you. And I look forward to meeting you if you're here or talking to you on the computer if you're somewhere else. Good luck. Great. Thank you, Marge. Um, as Marge mentioned, uh, you all have seen on the website and got an email uh, about the giveaway that is happening on Saturday, this Saturday, August 14th. Um, Nancy, I have spotlighted you again, but if you want to share a little bit more about that, I think people could benefit from hearing more. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. My thing was saying I was still muted, but maybe didn't think so. Um, okay. So on Saturday from this coming Saturday, the 14th, so day after tomorrow, at from 10 a.m. in the morning until 4 p.m. in the afternoon, very close to campus, there's a mosque and a Christian church right next door to each other. And they're right next to the standard apartment complex. In the parking lot of that Christian church, um, out on the sidewalk, there's going to be a free giveaway just to, because the community wants to welcome you to Fort Collins. So they've collected things that you might need for your kitchen, dishes, pots and pans, um, um, hot pads, silverware. I just, um, tea kettles, big pots, little pots, frying pans. They've collected things for your bedroom, sheets, towels, blankets, quilts, comforters. Um, trying to think what else is for the, and then for your bathroom, shower curtains and towels, and for your living room or your bedroom, lamps, especially um, lots of hangers. And um, right now we're collecting from the community. And I was there yesterday afternoon and in three hours, um, we had three cars dropping off deliveries nonstop from noon to three o'clock. Today, we're going back from four, four to seven to collect more things. We've got so much stuff. Every one of you students who are now in town can come and get whatever you need free. Um, we're gonna have a one-way line going through and you can pick up whatever you need. We're going to try and have some cars available to take you home if you pick items that are too heavy to carry in your backpack or in the bags that we provide. And we will require masks of everyone, even though we're outside just to be safe for you and for us. And we would welcome any of you to come. And for those of you who have not yet arrived, um, but you will be right, arriving after the 14th, there's another organization that's a little further from campus that's having uh, a giveaway next Saturday morning. I believe that's from 9 a.m. to noon. And they may have some bigger items like um, TVs or microwaves, or they typically have more of the small furniture kind of items. I think they'll also have household goods. So please join us and um, we, would, we look forward to meeting you. And I'll put my email in the chat if you have questions. Um, you can email Bronwyn or Mary or me. Great. Thank you so much, Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, so that is um, just a quick overview of the FCIC programs. I know that there are people that joined us late uh, and missed some of what we already talked about. So I'll be sharing those links again, but I also want to uh, recognize a few people that are here, not affiliated with any specific program, but just 
are always involved um, and you'll see them around at different things. So uh, before I go into some of the volunteers, I wanna recognize um, Mary Swing who works in our office. Um, Mary, if you just wanna quickly say hi, hold on, let me spotlight you because there's just a lot of people here. So Mary, if you wanna quickly say hi. Hi everyone, my name is Mary Swing. Um, I think I've met a few of you, but I'm really excited to get to meet more of you as you come in. I'm working in the Office of International Programs with Bronwyn specifically, um, and I'm getting to help plan a lot of really fun events that we're doing for orientation coming up this week and next week, and then getting to plan some fun fall events for this upcoming semester and then events in the spring as well. So I'll likely see you all around and I'll be doing a lot with FCIC. Um, and I just look forward to getting to know you all more and um, building some relationships with the international community that we have here. Awesome, thank you, Mary. Um, I would also, let's see, let's go through some of our volunteers now. Um, I will start with Gaurav. So I've just spotlighted you. Hi everyone, my name is Gaurav Harshehi and his pronouns. Um, I studied at Colorado State University from 2016 until 2019, but I was working there and in, uh, in the area until 2021, uh, earlier this year. And I just moved to Florida State University in July. Um, but yeah, I've been part of FCIC, I've been a part of uh, Office of International Programs as a student, a staff um, working under Bronwyn, Nancy, and everybody over there. Um, so if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. And FCIC, like I said, is a really wonderful program. So please um, give it, give back to the community because they love you and uh, we want to love them too so that they can love us back again. So it's, it's, it's a cycle and we keep it going. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Gara. Uh, let's see, next, uh, Ruth, I know is on this call, so let me spotlight you, make sure to unmute yourself and then introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ruth, my husband Fred. We've been involved for several years and we just love meeting the students. I think CSU attracts some of the best students in the world and we have been so blessed to get to know them because <laughs> they're a lot of fun. We've done things from driving lessons to cooking to just hanging out. And uh, we just really enjoy getting to, all, to know you and look forward to meeting new ones. Great. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I know Roy is here, so let me spotlight you, Roy. All right, you are spotlighted. Make sure to unmute yourself and then you are good to go. Hi, I'm Roy Mangeli. I met some of you at City Park the other night. I'm looking forward to meet, meeting many more of you. Uh, I've, I've been a general volunteer for quite a few years since I moved here. I actually started the Global Ambassadors Program uh, about 14 years ago. Uh, however, I've turned it over to younger, brighter, sharper people like Erin and Masa, whom will be running it. I'll uh, still provide backup for helping find drivers, i sorry, uh, speakers as well as drivers. I just love being here and uh, sooner or later we'll beat all of you. Thank you. Great, thank you, Roy. Um, okay, so now uh, is the time that I would like to open this up to you all for any questions that you may have for our volunteers. Um, I am putting some links in the chat right now for anyone who joined us late. So, so far I've only added two of them for outdoor programs and international friends, but I will be adding those there. Also, uh, while the sign up for the hike on September 11th is not live yet, the hikes are now listed on the outdoor programs page. So you can see what those hikes are and when they will be. Um, but if you have any questions for any of our volunteers, a quick reminder, and also for those who join late, we have uh, volunteers from our outdoor programs here, from our conversational English classes, from our Global Ambassador Student Program, which does presentations to local like elementary middle school groups, uh, volunteers from our international friends, which match students with community members for cross-cultural friendships, 
Inter International Night at the Library, which does presentations to the local community, um, the International Women's Club, um, as well as just various other volunteers that help out in a number of different ways. So if you have questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourself and uh, we'd, we'd love to hear. And if we're waiting for people to uh, maybe work up the courage to unmute themselves, does anyone from FCIC have any questions for the group that maybe you'd like to ask? For those who did join late, we have people from joining us from all over the world right now. So March. Um, earlier, I missed the name of the person from Bangladesh. And I want to know if that person is in town now. And if so, can he type in the chat? Yeah. So I know there's a Mohammed here. At least two. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure if he's here right now or there was someone else in the chat. Let's see. We have a message. <laughs> and Mohammed is here. We met him yesterday. Oh. So um, wait. So should I type in the chat or he type in the chat? Well, he typed in the chat that he's here. Um, oh. So Marge, if you... So how, yeah. how do I connect? I mean, uh, how do I... Yeah. So Mohammed, just so you know, Marge is asking, she lived in Bangladesh for a number of years. Um, okay. If you are okay with me connecting you to Mohammed, can you let me know in the chat and then I'll just email both of you uh, and make that connection? Ma'am, I, I can post my email address here. Sure. Okay. Oh, so now he'll know I'm uh, techno challenged <laughs> without girl. Yeah. Um, Did you get it, ma'am? Yes, I see it there. Oh, yeah. And I will make sure Marge gets it. Okay. I think so. <laughs> Um, Aaron uh, is wondering if there's a way for you to interact with each other. Uh, there are a number of people arriving on the 14th and you wanted to see if anyone will be joining you arriving then. Um, yeah, so I don't know if anyone in this chat is also, or in this group is also planning to arrive on the 14th. Um, Aaron Gill just posted in the chat, uh, if you are, Arriving then, you know, you can and drop a line there. Erin, is that what you meant or did you mean more of an opportunity to like connect in person once people are here? Okay, there's also someone else is arriving on the 14th. So if you see that in the chat. Uh, Tom, right now we don't know about the English classes. Uh, Lou, do you wanna talk a little about that? Tong asked if the English classes will be virtual all semester. We do not know that answer. We would like to meet in person, but we will continue to do Zoom as long as that seems viable. So if you use the information that was given um, and you want to do it virtual, for sure it is all of August. And so we're not sure what will happen in September. Does that answer your question, Tom? Yes, thank you. Does anyone else okay. have any questions? Um, so just so you know, uh, Aaron, I know you asked about um, anyone else arriving on the 14th and Cassia or Kasha, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, is also arriving the 14th. If you want to just like private message each other on here, you can send like a, you know, a private chat uh, and connect with uh, each other if you're interested. Um, that can be a good way to do that. Also, you know, if you're looking for something in particular, you can feel free to email me. Um, I can't promise to give you students contact information since that is protected, but if you're looking to connect with a particular student or group of students, what I can do is I can reach out to those individuals, get their permission, 
um, to share information, or if I have your information, I can share it with people. So, um, ma'am, I had a question. Sure, uh, go ahead. Uh, I missed the uh, the event of 9th of August because I was in Bangladesh. I was traveling at that time. I was in the on the plane, so I missed it. Is there anything to do? It was mandatory as I see. Yeah, so it's posted actually on the orientation website. Okay. Um, there's a link there to watch the recording. Yeah. So you can actually watch it that way. Um, as we get a little further on, we'll post the, the videos even more prominently. Uh, it won't be just a link, but you'll actually see the, the small video clip on the page, but that is available right now. Okay, so it's, it's all done then if I uh, watch the video, right? Yes, okay. that's correct. Okay, thanks, ma'am. Yes. Does anyone have other questions? Um, Nancy? <laughs> um, I'm just curious if any of the students are arriving with families or already here with families because um, there's lots of extra logistics that we know you have to go through. So we're here also to help you with that information if we can. And I was just wondering if maybe you would put in the chat if you're here with your spouse or with your, um, your um, spouse and children. And we are just so fortunate to have all of you. So wherever you're coming from, whether you're here now or you can't get here this semester, um, we're, we're here for you. We're here for you to help you figure out how to get here next semester. And um, uh, hopefully by then our homestay program will be open and we'll be able to offer temporary accommodation when you arrive. But um, that's been on hold for three semesters. So, so Pooja is here with their spouse. And as Lou said, your spouse can join the conversational English classes. Uh, Roy, are you trying to say something? Yes, if I may just uh, add on to the uh, idea of families coming, uh, totally separately, but a, an organization begun by a, a CSU graduate is called Stork Support. I'm a supporter and volunteer with them. And what it does is provide uh, things that young parents need for children, which can be very expensive uh, and sometimes not that easy to get. So uh, if, a new, if you're arriving, especially from another country, you won't be able to have carried all the information from strollers to whatever that little children need. Um, how can we arrange, who, who was that barge who was talking about families? Yes. Okay, uh, Marge, if you could, if you see a need, would you contact me and I can put the people in touch uh, and uh, see if we can get these, the equipment and things that some of these new families will need. That's all. We actually have a couple right now that needs stork support. Okay, get your, why don't you uh, call me later or email me. Okay, thanks, Roy. Uh, so we also got a question um, about outdoor programs. And so uh, I did answer it in the chat. Mark Oberschmidt also uh, did some other things, but I just figure I'll say something out loud so people know. Um, almost all of the FCIC programs are free. Um, so there's no cost to join the conversational English classes, to take part in the International Women's Club, um, to join the Global Ambassadors, to do international friends. Uh, Mark, do you just want to touch on the outdoor programs? The cost of the outdoor programs. Mark, sorry, I accidentally muted you. Uh, the cost of the outdoor program is only to cover um, the cost of the, rans, the vans, because we rent the vans from the CSU Motor Pool, and it's a by the mile type thing. So the further we drive, the more expensive the van. So we try to keep it in the ten to fifteen dollar per person range uh, for the rent and rental. And then if we're doing snowshoeing, um, which you'll learn about that later in the year, uh, that usually requires that you rent snowshoes, uh, which is an additional cost. Uh, and if we're 
it's uh, not that expensive. So most of the outdoor trips are, you know, usually less than 20 bucks for sure. Uh, and usually more likely in the 10 to $15 range. And I did put um, for the question about what the schedule is, I did put a link in the chat to the outdoor program schedule. Um, I have not included like all of the exact times for them, but most of the hikes uh, or most of the outdoor programs are pretty much all day trips, right? You usually leave eight-ish and come back five or six, depending on what the event is. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, and usually, like I said, we try to keep our drives to uh, less than two hours each way. Um, most of the hikes we can get to in under an hour. Um, I think the longest drive we have generally is when we go out east to Pawnee Buttes and then up to Wyoming and then back around. Um, so that's a longer day driving. Um, but yeah, generally, it's, we try to keep the drives as short as possible. Uh, there's also a question, uh, if you, if there's a chance to create a group chat, uh, so you can interact and absolutely. Um, I think if you all want to connect, I think that's great. Um, I don't know the best way to do it. Unfortunately, um, you could certainly, maybe the easiest thing would be that if you are interested so that we're not sharing, you know, emails and everything with everybody, you can either private message me your, your contact information and then I'll connect those of you that are interested. Um, and then you can form, you know, whether you do it in WeChat or it's like a group chat or you do it in uh, WhatsApp or something like that. Um, you can do that, uh, whether or social media, you know, however you wanna do it. Um, but maybe that's the best way to do that. If you're interested in being part of you know, a, a group of new students uh, that are connecting with each other outside of just the international groups, um, maybe send me a direct message through Teams, or sorry, through Zoom, um, or email me and I can connect you. We can also probably send out a message to all incoming students and let them know if they're interested um, to reach out and we can get even more of you connected that way. Um, yeah, you can, Aaron, you can do that. If you want to drop that in the chat to everybody, that is an even better way to do that. Um, so I'm actually going to change what I just said. And if you're interested in connecting with people, I'm going to let Aaron Gill, sorry, not Aaron Tompkins, uh, Aaron Gill, drop a message in the chat and people can connect that way. Um, I think that's a great idea. And just to make sure that everybody sees that, Erin um, dropped her Instagram handle in the chat. And if you wanna be part of a group chat, connect with her there and she'll add you to it. I think that's a really great idea. So thank you, Erin, for um, suggesting that. Other questions? Ma'am, I had the question. Uh, I am uh, I am from Bangladesh, and my wife and my uh, ch child will also join me within few days, I think. And my spouse was a job holder, private job holder, so uh, she loves to be among works. But as per law, I know that F1 students and their spouses cannot perform any off-campus job or nothing. So, uh, is there any option for her to join in something so that she can feel that she's among works and feel better? Is there anything? Yeah. Else? I mean, I think that um, some of the FCIC programs are a great way to be involved and meet other people, uh, which then could create connections, right? So the International Women's Club, for example, okay. would be a great way for her to meet up with other people. Okay. Um, if she wanted to get involved and, um, you know, volunteer, there's opportunities again within FCIC, but because there are other people there, she might get ideas for other things to do, other ways to be involved. And so I think that's a good starting point for her. Okay. So if you are, um, uh, if you don't have any specific questions, um, you don't need to stay on. Um, 
we are happy to continue chatting though, so you don't need to leave either. Um, but if you have questions, I would ask that you drop them in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, we do still have about 10 minutes. Um, if you do have things that you would like to ask us and haven't yet, and otherwise, if you don't, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and just a reminder that if you're interested um, uh, in being part of a group of like a group chat for the new students that are here, um, reach out to Erin on Instagram. Uh, and if you're not on Instagram for some reason, maybe drop her a message here in the direct message. Um, and I think that's all I have. Is there anything else that anyone from FCSC wants to share with the group um, before we head off? And if you can, yeah, Vicki? Yes, um, I, I didn't mention before, but I do want to mention that you can participate in International Friends, whether you're in Fort Collins or somewhere else. Uh, one advantage of that is that you will have a friend here for you waiting when you arrive. So please feel free to contact me via email or um, through the link uh, and apply for international friends, even if you're not in Fort Collins right now. Great, thank you. I'm also putting in the chat, um, the FCIC Facebook page. Um, there is also an Instagram page. I don't know, Garb, if you have it handy, if you can maybe put it in the chat. I'm trying to get into it and not getting it quite as easily. Thank you. <laughs> Takes a team sometimes to make this work. Um, so yeah, if there's, okay, I see a couple messages here. Alex also put the Instagram, um, Facebook page, or sorry, the Facebook page for the International Women's Group. Um, sorry, I'm looking at multiple messages and getting my wires crossed. Uh, Aaron, I sent you a message from one of the other students who asked that he be added to something with the group chat and gave me the WhatsApp information, his WhatsApp information. His or her, sorry. Uh, Gar, thank you for dropping the FCAC Instagram in the chat. Um, and for the Facebook link as well. If anyone has other questions, again, feel free. We have a few more minutes here. Um, I'm also just going to put uh, the main Fort Collins International Center web site in the chat right now. Um, I added the individual links directly to each page um, while we were doing things and again at the end, but this will take you to their main page from, and from there you can access all of the individual pages as well. So outdoor programs, conversational English classes, international friends, international women's club, global ambassador student program, international night at the library, there's places if you have questions to reach out to people. Um, and like I said, this is a really unique uh, group that exists and they're here really just to help you and get to know you. So I hope that you will take advantage of the many programs they offer, that you will get involved, that you will um, come to appreciate our volunteers as much as they are uh, I mean, as, as just for as awesome as they are. Um, okay. Um, so I might also, thank you, Nancy, for posting the CSU International Rams Facebook page. That's another good way to connect and just kind of hear about things that are happening. Um, Look for housing. Yeah. Um, okay, so I... I'm getting a couple of questions here or messages um, that there might be some issues with kind of the, the group um, like chat and how that might work in different formats. So if you do have an Instagram, reach out to Aaron. 
If you don't, I think we'll also just follow up with a message to students and see if anyone else wants to connect and, and we can get that figured out that way. Um, because I know some people are reaching out with their WhatsApp information and we may need to figure out a good way to get everybody hooked up together. Um, so just so you know, I think there'll be more information. We will get you connected if you wanna be connected, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, anything else? Does anyone else wanna share anything? Do any of our volunteers, Nancy? <laughs> Me again. Um, I want to follow up to what Vicki said. The International Friends Program, we know most of you students are going to be really busy studying and making friends and finding things to do with your friends. But we know also that when you, especially you masters and PhD students who are bringing your families, when you're busy studying, your spouse and children um, have a lot of free time. So an international friend quite often is more a support system for your family um, that lets you feel less guilty about all the hours you have to spend in the lab or the library or studying or going to classes. That's a great point, Nancy. Um, if there are not more questions, um, we can have people here available for a little bit longer. I will just put in a, a quick reminder to everybody. Um, I just put the orientation page link um, in the chat. You have one more mandatory event this week. That is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Fort Collins time. Um, if for some reason you are unable to make it, it will also be reported and then posted to the website. Uh, the optional giveaway on Saturday, August 14th is from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That is also there with the location and an idea of what things will happen. And then there's orientation events happening all next week. One mandatory, um, a bunch of optional fun things where you can meet more people. So if you would like to meet people, whether it's other students, uh, new students, returning students, cultural mentors, if you wanna meet Fort Collins International Center of Volunteers, they are coming to the optional events as well. So, um, stop by if you have that opportunity we would love to see you mary is there anything i'm missing i feel like i've been in a bunch of different places so no i think you covered everything i was going to add the orientation schedule in the chat but we look forward to seeing you all great thank you aaron i don't know if you see okay perfect thank you you cut and when i say aaron i'm sorry i don't mean aaron tompkins there are two of you I'm mainly talking to Erin Gill right now because she's doing all of the connections for students. So uh, I appreciate you taking that uh, on Erin Gill. <laughs> Anwen? Yes, Lou. I just wanted, I wanted you to tell people what your background is. Yeah, so my background, um, let me, um, spotlight myself for a second so that everyone can see it nice and big, um, is of the Colorado State University Mountain Campus. Um, it's about an hour and a half away from Fort Collins, but only because of how you have to get there. It's actually very close. Like if you just, you know, could fly there, I guess, or <laughs> walk there, it would be not too far away. Um, and it's someplace that uh, I hope that we will have the opportunity to take you all to uh, maybe next year. We usually do a trip every year. We won't be doing it this year, but I um, am hoping that we'll get to do one next year and that you all will get to see this beautiful, beautiful place um, that is such a great example of uh, everything that makes Colorado wonderful. Um, and so that is where my picture is at our mountain campus. Thanks for asking about that, Lou. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? Okay. 
Well, if you do, if you were too shy to ask um, in the group, very nice. Okay, so the Impact MBA program gets to go to the Mountain Campus next week. That's awesome. Uh, have a great time. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and okay, thank you, Erin Gill, <laughs> for letting me know that. I will uh, let people know if I hear from them about that. Um, otherwise, I thank everyone for their time, both our volunteers and our, our students uh, and our staff. Um, and I hope you all will join us for some of our programs happening, uh, that some of them are happening already uh, on an ongoing basis and some of them will be happening soon. Like I said, our first outdoor program, which will be a hike, will be Saturday, September 11th. Um, I expect that that sign up information will be on the website um, probably this weekend. Mark or Steve, I don't remember off the top of my head. Do you know, is that $10 or 15? Do we know? I think that's a $10 hike. Okay, so probably $10 uh, that will be up and available probably this weekend. So if you're interested, check that out, uh, sign up. They do tend to fill up quickly usually. So um, I recommend signing up. Uh, you all happen to know about it before any of our other students. So you have an advantage. Um, to hop on that. And otherwise, if you have questions that you just, you know, didn't feel comfortable asking in front of the large group, um, then please feel free to email me. You have my email. I've been emailing you lots of things this past week in particular. Um, and we look forward to seeing you um, soon or seeing you again for those that we've already seen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. See you soon. So I'm gonna give it just about 30 seconds. And if you're still in the room, feel free to ask a question. If not, I'll end this session in about 30 seconds, so. Okay. Thank you everyone, have a great day.